just guggling, gargling some, guzzling some fucking mouthwash right before the show so you, my breath smells minty, venti, freshy, just for you frosty wassies, because that's right, it's back. Yeah, it's back. I'm back. The one, the only, the cringiest crossdresser on YouTube, your bestie who's a bestie, the hostess with the mostest, the one, the incomparable Vivian Frost, back with another episode of The Frost Bite. Now, today is Tuesday, January 23rd, 2023. 24, excuse me, fuck. I wish it was fucking last year. Last year wasn't bad for me. Got some badass blouses. <laughs> anyway, yeah, moving on. And the Oscar nominations were freshly announced less than 15, less than 24 hours ago. The Oscar nominations were announced. So what more fun thing to do than to go over them and give my psychic predictions for this year's Oscar winners based on the first day of the nominees. So, let's go ahead and start the show. So, best visual effects, Godzilla, minus one. 100%. Is it gonna win? It should. Uh, but I, I'm willing to bet that the Academy fucking just loves Tom Cruise. I mean, it's, why is this even nominated? The new, Mission Impo the new Mission Impossible was the worst one since two. I have a whole video of my rankings, check it out. If I was smarter, I had a producer, they would link it right here for you. Anyway. Godzilla minus one. It should have been, I wish it was nominated for best foreign language film, but you can only submit one per country and Japan didn't submit it. Still the best film myself all fucking year. My best picture is Godzilla minus one, but it should win for best visual effects. Not just because it deserves it, but also because the budget was like 10 million and that's like Tom Cruise's, half of Tom Cruise's fee. Probably Joaquin Phoenix's fee. Uh, probably Chris Pratt's fee. Uh, probably, you know, the main cast fee. Uh, you know, and the, the whole movie was done for it. And it's better than, honestly, it's the best movie on the fucking list. It is fucking amazing. If you haven't seen Godzilla Minus One, see it. It's about to come back into theaters in black and white. Go see it again, because that's what I'm going to fucking do. But moving on up, best sound. I would say Godzilla Minus One, but it's not nominated, but Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer is going to win a lot of technical awards. It, I'm kind of iffy. The, the, the uh, answer, answer unclear, ask later. Uh, as far as the acting awards go, but it might sweep. It might be Nolan's time. Uh, best original song, uh, my favorite song. Uh, I haven't heard two of them, so I have to base it on, you know, Killers of the Flower Moon and Barbie. Uh, I'm gonna go, uh, what was I made for? Just so we can see Margot Robbie sing live at the fucking Oscars. Ah, dream girl. Anyway, best original score, Oppenheimer, bottom line. Uh, poor things could upset here, but it, it's, it's Oppenheimer. Uh, best International Feature, Godzilla Minus One. Uh, haven't seen most of these, but I did see Society of the Snow, which honestly was fantastic. Uh, I already did my top 10 for the year, but it came out this year. Uh, well, here at least in America, but that's why it's... It came out here this year, but it's on the nominations because of the deadlines and shit like that. But Society of the Snow, the retelling of Frank Marshall's A Lie, which itself was a retelling of another movie from like the 70s about it, uh, you know about the rugby team that ate each other, you know? And cannibalism is a big part, but it's that's always like the sensational part. The, the true story is the fact that these kids, these goddamn kids half my fucking age survived. You know, I'd be dead the first time. I'd just like, fuck it. Fuck it. Just, just let me go to sleep. Bam. Nice little frozen corpse like this. Uh, Jack Nicholson on The Shining. Uh, uh, anyway, best animated feature, Boy and the Heron. Although I think uh, I will... Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is fucking amazing. I love it to death. Elemental was good too. Uh, but The Boy and the Heron is just, I think there's there's a lot to it. It's poignant for the time. It just feels like, you know, the Ghibli is the perfect Ghibli for the time. If that makes sense? I don't know. Maybe it was just me. Maybe it was the fucking drugs. I don't know. I think it's going to win, but I wouldn't be surprised if Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse does win. That's probably my favorite. But I think The Boy and the Heron is the better one. Uh, makeup and hairstyling. I think uh, on, uh, Society of the Snow did amazing with their like visual effects, their physical effects, like the fucking teeth wiggling. God, that was fucking horrible, uh, but a great effect. So I'm gonna Oppenheimer's probably gonna win or Maestro, but I think Society of the Snow was the best of these. Poor thing. Actually, you know what? No, I'm sorry. I take it back. I didn't. I just went right from Oppenheimer's Society. Poor things. Poor things. Poor things should win this, uh, but I think Oppenheimer might because whenever they do age makeup, it always is like Oscar bait and like. You know what I'm saying? Costume design, Barbie, yes please, has to, should, that is correct. Production design, Barbie and Poor Things, and I, I mean, see, Barbie, off, Barbenheimer and Poor Things, it's all like, it's any of those are going to win, most likely. I think Killers of the Flower Moon is going to get completely snubbed. Uh, that's my psychic prediction, because uh, the Oscars hate Scorsese. 
Uh, but yeah, let's go with Barbie on production. Editing, Oppenheimer has to be uh, adapted screenplay. Barbie, 100%. Barbie, 100%. 100%. If you, if you think it's stupid, that's your opinion, and you're entitled to it. But look at it, don't look at it as like meant to be a, a, a some sort of woke, progressive bullshit, you know, uh, derogatory, influ influenced word that you like to use to describe it. It's a good fucking movie, and if you pay attention to what it's saying, it's very, very good. And I think that's, I think the people that are, get see that and, appreci and appreciate that part of it are the ones that like it. And if you're a fucking idiot and, or you disagree with that point of view completely because of uh, orange with, you know, pubic hair growing on its head. Uh, in the White House, that's your fucking fault. No, best original screenplay, The Holdovers, fucking fantastic. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall, really good, but I think the, the Holdovers, it's gonna, actually, Maestro, Holdovers, it's blurry, The Holdovers should win every category it's nominated for, because it was the best film of the year. Uh, favorite was Godzilla, nice one. Uh, best cinematog cinematography, Oppenheimer's gonna win, although Poor Things and Killers of the Flower Moon, this could be the one it wins for Killers of the Flower Moon. If it's gonna win one, this is the best chance it has for cinematography. Supporting actress, uh, has to be Devine Joy Randolph, 100%, no question, 100% supporting actor. Downey Jr. is gonna get his calling, uh, his Oscar here. Uh, and now we have, uh, because, um, oh, whatchamacallit, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't give a shit about all the other categories except the big five since they actually did, you know, graphics for to make, you know, spice it up because I had to work today and I just thought it'd be fun to do it timely, in a timely manner. Uh, but actress, uh, actress in a leading role, Ro Margot Robbie should have been nominated here, uh, but I think it's going to be, uh, I don't think Emma's going to win. I think it might actually be uh, Gladstone or Binning. I think it's going to be one of those two. Hard to say, hard to say. Uh, no, you just for an actor in a leading role. Paul Giamatti should win 100%. Paul Giamatti should win this Oscar. That is the correct. And that's not taking anything away from these other performances. Paul Giamatti, this is his fucking movie. This is his fucking year. But I think, you know, the confusion there, they might give it to Killian. They might give it to Killian because Oppenheimer is such an Oscar darling. So it's either gonna, if it wins the early awards that I mentioned, then it's sweeping. Then it's getting everything. Uh, Oscars for directing, Gerwig should absolutely be here. Uh, Nolan. It's Nolan's fucking year. It's Nolan and, you know, that's the bottom fucking line. Now, best picture. No. Again, Godzilla minus one. Uh, but actually, of these listed, my favorite, my personal one that I would love to see win is The Holdovers. I think that is a, it was an amazing, beautiful movie that more people need to see. And it's not just a Christmas movie that I'll be watching it for every fucking year because it's so goddamn good. But anyway, I think Oppenheimer's gonna win. Uh, it's just, I think it's gonna sweep. I think it's, it's, the, it's, this is the one, this is the year of the sweep. We're gonna have a movie just fucking sweep, like hard. And it's Nolan's fucking time. And then of course, now Oscar nominations by film, the most, Oppenheimer. Again, I think it's gonna get most of them. I don't, I think Killers of the Flower Moon is gonna be the snub, and Oppenheimer is gonna be the win. Uh, you know, but we'll see. And that's, that's it. So by now, if you stuck around for all the madness, you should be subscribing right here. And then right here's a video you should watch based on all the other weird shit that you watch on YouTube that you think nobody knows, but the fucking analytics are, hun. They're always watching. Just like those angels in the goddamn outfield. Let me know what video this one is down in the comments. Smash my like button. And as always, lovelies, until next time, stay fucking frosty.